rolling. Woo! Great morning. That was good timing back there. So, fired up. It's Triple M time. Monday morning motivation. I'm one half of your host, Aubrey Roxy. will be here in a second. She's making her tea or in shape or something. I've already got mine. I'm always prepared, you guys. So, today, who are we going to listen to? The greatest minds from around the world always show up on Triple M. Remember that. Write that down in your notes first. The greatest minds from around the world always show up on Triple M. Got my notebook ready because today we're listening to Mark Zuckerberg, one of the youngest billionaires ever. He's worth over, I think, $30 billion, close to $39 billion, almost $40 billion. I think he might still be in his 20s, if not his early 30s. He is the founder of Facebook, the most powerful social media platform on the planet, which now owns Instagram as well. And he's going to be sharing his top 10 rules for, some, for success. The youngest billionaire ever. Do you think maybe he knows a little bit about success? I don't know. But I take some notes from the guy. So get your notes ready. We're going to have some shares at the end. If you're at work, put your cheers in the chat. If you can share live, give me a thumbs up or a smile at the end. And uh, we want to hear your perspective because everybody's perspective is valuable. So without further ado, Mark Zuckerberg, Triple M. Let's get to work. 38.6 billion dollars. He's Mark Zuckerberg and here are his top 10 rules for success. First of all, focus on it, right? I mean, I think like you basically get what you spend your time doing, right? I mean, I want the company to build three products this year I and mean, we're gonna work on a few others because people are interested in them, but those are the three things that I'm spending my product time on, right? Um, you, you get what you put into it. Um, if you spend a third of your time um, trying to make the people around you better through getting better people, um, mentoring, getting them to be better, getting the best people in your organization who you know into more impactful roles, then I think over time that just accrues and you get a better organization. We've had this tradition for, I don't know, probably seven or eight years at the company uh, where every week uh, we have a Q&A where, um, where our employees can come and ask me any question that they want about what's going on and um, what, the, what the direction of the company is or questions or things that they read about in the press or that their friends who use the product, um, what, what they're asking them. And, um, and it's been this really important tradition for us um, both because we really believe in, in openness and communication, and that's kind of what Facebook is all about. Uh, but it's also really important for, for me and for um, running the company to be able to get feedback, right? And, and to be able to learn what's on people's minds, um, what, our, what our employees and folks um, who, who, are, who are part of our team are thinking about. And, um, and just kind of a lot of the time there are good questions that people ask that change the way that we, that we think about what we're building and what we're here to do in the world and um, that often make us go think and reevaluate um, how we should be approaching different problems. So many things go wrong when you're starting a company, and often I think people ask, you know, what mistakes uh, should you avoid making? And, you know, my answer to that question is don't even bother trying to avoid mistakes because you're going to make tons of mistakes, right? And the, the, um, the important thing is actually learning quickly from whatever mistakes you make and not giving up. Right, and I mean, there, there are things every single year of Facebook's existence that could have killed us or made it so that it, it just seemed like moving forward and making a lot of progress just seemed intractable, but you just kind of bounce back and you learn and um, nothing is impossible. You just have to kind of keep running through the walls. I don't hire people who I wouldn't work for myself. I think that's a really good heuristic because everyone knows this, like, there's this saying like, a players hire A players and B players hire C players, which is like good people hire good people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that that's that informative, right? Because right. I mean, it's what are you going to say? Like, to someone in your organization, so hire you're better a B people. player, you don't get to hire people. Like, I mean, no. I mean, yeah. um, <laughs> and, and I think a lot of the time the problem is you don't actually know. I and mean, sometimes you're like trying to figure out how good someone is. If you didn't think they were good, you wouldn't have hired them. But the heuristic of only hiring people who you would work for um, tends to be pretty good, I think. Because then it's like, then that you know, right? It's like, I would not work for this person, then okay, I'm not going to like, stretch just because I need to fill a role today. When you're starting something, it's, um, it's just kind of hard. You need to be pretty headstrong about it, right? And there are going to be all these challenges that come up. And I think the main thing that you need to do is just not give up, right? And, um, and kind of know what you want to do. And, you know, the, the best entrepreneurs that, who I've met, 
don't really start companies because their goal is to build a company. They do it because they want to make a change in the world and help people. And I think if you if you kind of stay true to that and um, and if you just focus on kind of powering through no matter what the the challenges are that will inevitably come up in your path, then um, you'll find that there are lots of tools that are available and a lot of people who will help you build what you're building. One definition that I have for uh, a good team is a group of people that makes better decisions as a whole than would individually make as a sum of the parts. And um, when you're, I think most smart people like learning, right? And I mean, that's like one of the thrills of starting a company, right? Is you're just, the, the learning curve can be so steep. And um, if you can set up a team dynamic where you're constantly learning from the people around you, then I mean, what's better, right? It's so, like, these are the people I wake up every morning and I wanna, I wanna go learn from and is, work from. Is that one of your heuristics for hiring people too, to like hire people that you learn from? Yeah, uh, and when building a team, you want it to you want to think about the dynamics so that way you can maintain this property that the team makes better decisions as a group than any individual would. I always kind of like I get a little upset whenever any media attention focuses on me personally and me leading Facebook, much less a movie. <laughs> it's, 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 been, it's been kind of a bad year, hasn't it? <laughs> um, it turned out okay. Time Academy. Um, it turned out. It turned out. It turned out okay. The time thing was awesome. Um, the, um, that, was, that was really flattering, but like, but I think that it's one of these things that the media systematically gets wrong is that this idea that it's a person, right? It's never a person, right? It's, it's always a team. And the most important thing if you are an entrepreneur trying to build something is you need to build a really good team. And that's what I spend a lot of my time on, right? I mean, I spend, um, probably at least three hours a day with our core team, right, mm -hmm. uh, and doing things. I spend probably 25% um, of my time recruiting, finding good people, both outside the company and inside the company to put in more, uh, in, in more um, impactful roles. So there's this inherent conflict in the system, though, which is, you know, are we trying to optimize Newsfeed to give each person, all of you guys, the best experience when you're reading? Or are we trying to help businesses just reach as many people as possible? And in every decision that we make, we optimize for the first, for making it so that when, for the, the people um, who we serve, who use Facebook and who are reading newsfeed, um, get the very best experience that they can. And that means that if a business is sharing content that's gonna be useful for them, then we'll show that. But that means that if the business is sharing content that isn't going to be useful for them, um, we may not show that because it's probably more important that they learn about their friend who had a baby and their baby is healthy. So that's an important guiding principle for how we think about this stuff. And as the, um, and as the products continue to develop, there's just going to be more people sharing more things. Um, and we're going to continue to try to do our best at, at showing the best things that we can, understanding that there's no way that, we can, that a person will ever take the time to go through every one of the 1,500 things um, that are shared with them every single day. Um, so that's, but that's kind of how I think about organic reach. And, um, you know, there are a lot of pages that are doing, that are doing quite successfully and their organic reach is, is growing quite a bit because they're delivering content to people that they really want. Um, so if you're a business owner and you're thinking about how to use your free page on Facebook, I would just focus on trying to publish really good content that's gonna be compelling to your customers and the people who are following you. You know, I, I actually, I spent a bunch of time analyzing and, and reflecting on why it was that we were even able to do it because all like all reasons suggest that we shouldn't have been able to do it, right? Because all these other companies had way more engineering power and, um, and, and servers and time and money and all this stuff. And I actually think that this is a pretty instructive thing for anything that you want to go do because this is the same property is going to be true for anything that you guys start is that someone else is going to have more resources and be able to do it. The reason why I think we actually ended up being the ones doing it is because we just cared way more about it than everyone else, right? So, there were always projects at some of these other companies that were these hobbies, but we always thought that it was this really important thing and really just like felt in our gut and our heart that we wanted to do it. And you know, early on there were always these skeptics saying that, oh, this can't be a business. We didn't actually care that much about it being a business early on. Uh, but a lot of the reason why bigger companies didn't invest in it was because it wasn't clear that there was a model that would work for it. It seemed like a bad idea. Yeah, and I actually think that that's true for a lot of the best ideas. Where it is that it's not that someone else can't do it, they actually can, and the odds are stacked against you, but I think often that belief in the fact that you just care so much about what you're doing is the only thing that kind of drives you to do it. And, you know, to be honest, that kind of drives me to this day. I mean, one of the, the big emphasis uh, points for the company right now 
is internet.org. And you know, for a while we had this rallying cry of can we connect a billion people? Um, and you know, when we started talking about that, we thought that was crazy, right? It was way bigger than any service in in the world that had been built, and you know, it was you know, ten digits long, right? It's like a you know, it just it felt crazy. We'd never get to that. But then the thing is, as we started to actually get closer to that. We took a step back and we're like, all right, well, our mission isn't actually to get one in seven people in the world to be connected. It's we want to connect everyone. So it's, um, it's a big issue that only around a third of the people in the world have access to the internet. And that's something that we think that we can do something about. And similar to early Facebook, we don't, there's no business model around this. I mean, all the people who have all the money in the world, I mean, it's not necessarily a fair thing, are already the people who are on Facebook, right? It's in the first, you know, seventh of the world. Um, but we just believe really strongly. It's like, this is what we are here to do. Um, this is what our company cares about, I care about it, the team cares about it, our culture cares about it, so we're just going to keep pushing on it. And I actually think a lot of the reason why great stuff gets built is because it's kind of irrational at the time, um, but so it, it kind of selects for the people who care the most about it doing it. But the students around me were really important as well, right? And um, both in high school and in college, I mean, the people who started Facebook with me and a lot of the people who are still with me running the company today are people who I met when I was at Harvard. And um, some of them were my TFs at Harvard, right? And, you know, when the professors were, were off writing papers, um, these were the people who actually taught me. And then we hung out and we had like social bonds and um, academic bonds. And um, I, I just, I wouldn't understate the importance of that. And I mean, it, it's very tied into my whole philosophy and the product that, that I spend my life building Facebook because um, we just believe that social bonds are critical. And, um, and one way that I think about the, the value that Facebook is filling in the world is that you, know, you go through school and at least when I did, people just focused on you know, academics, like achievement, different areas. And one of the things that no one really ever taught me was like having friends is really valuable. No, not that I didn't have friends, but, but like, um, Although, you know, the movie, yes. like, make it seem that I didn't. Um, but, but that first but like, girlfriend but, but, is but, a, but for sure, I don't think anyone is like, it's not like, okay, third grade, we're going to like, now we're going to like teach you that like hanging out with people is a very important development, right? And I, I don't know, I actually think that that is. And um, I think that that's part of the reason why sometimes people view Facebook as a waste of time, but I actually think it's this extremely socially valuable utility. And I, I know that I wouldn't be where I, where I am today um, without that aspect of my life being as developed as the academic part. Thank you so much for watching. I made this video because Moxertons asked me to. So if there's a famous entrepreneur that you want me to profile next, leave it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. I would also love to know which of Mark Zuckerberg's Awesome, so great stuff. Amazing, amazing nuggets. I know it's a lot of stuff. A little different of a triple M, but you gotta remember, you can learn from everybody, especially somebody as successful as Mark Zuckerberg. So what do you got for us? Ah, uh, what's up? Great morning. So for me, some of my big, like, I'm gonna share quick takeaways. Um, one of them was, I love when you talked about making mistakes. He said, most people will ask, hey, like, what do I do in order to avoid certain things? But at the end of the day, you don't learn if you don't make mistakes yourself. And one of the biggest things I've heard is, you know, you gotta be willing to fail your way to success. Because it's not in the triumphs and it's not inside of the success that you grow, rather it's in the failures, rather it's in the mistakes. So going through all of those things is so, so necessary because I know for me personally, there's been times where I didn't want to like fail because of the fear of failing and what it feels like. But to be honest, now looking back and connecting the dots and just going back to it, I've seen how by me failing, I was able to become who I am today. And that is so valuable because now, not only is it valuable for yourself, but then it's also, it also becomes valuable to other people because you can then share from your own experiences, not saying, hey, you're not gonna fail, but rather like, hey, I failed, I made mistakes, and I still achieved, and I got to, this, to my success. So I think that one was really, really good. And I loved how you talked about giving people the best experience possible. And what really stood out to me, just because for me, the way that I get to do like my business and our business, I do it a lot through, through, through like social media, through a platform where everybody is connected and there's 
like no limits on who you can reach. And the thing that it st stuck out to me the most was how you said, publish great content. And I really love that because once I started to become more intentional with my business and how I wanted to do it and how I wanted to build it, I noticed that there was a shift in my content. And really not only in the content, but paying attention to what people like. And that has been like so, so key. And now one of the things that's so funny that we listen to him because uh, for me, like Instagram, I'm very, very like great at Instagram. But one of the things that I also want to get get to get great at is Facebook because it's so like, it's so amazing. And I know so many people do amazing stuff on there. So I really want to go ahead and do that and really take that on of publishing different content because Instagram and Facebook, I've noticed it's a little different. So I need to see what works in Facebook. So Nice. Awesome. Uh, great tips for me. Uh, a couple of the ones that stood out for me, get, you get what you spend your time doing. You know, your time is your biggest asset. And it's the one thing that you can never get back that you spend on a daily basis. What does that mean? You're spending your time investing in something. I used to invest a lot of time in PlayStation with Final Fantasy, with Core Nuts, uh, with Simpsons. I was a big Simpsons fan. And I invested my time on that. And my, my payback, my return on investment, low energy, low confidence, overweight, that was my return on investment. Because what you get invested in always gives you a return. There's just going to be different returns. Neither is good nor bad. But he said, you get what you spend most of your time doing. And once you understand that, you start to just become aware. What am I spending my time investing in? And then is it what I want to become? Is it where I want to go? You know, for me, when I hear the statistics about Americans watching between two and four hours of TV a day, I get mind blown. I'm like two and four hours. That's like 20 hours a week. That's like a part-time job watching programming that was designed to sell you something. And I'm like, whoa, that's why when I invested in that, my life was a certain way. I personally, it was around like 10th, 11th grade. I stopped watching TV because I noticed where it was taking me. Uh, four years ago, got rid of the TV completely. Uh, no TV, no movies, haven't had cable in forever. Now just watch a documentary every now and then. Netflix on the laptop. That's about it every now and then. Because I wanted to make sure that I was giving maximal time to the things that were going to take me where I wanted to go. So you get what you spend most of your time doing. Scrolling aimlessly does not take me anywhere. And I get to focus on not doing it too much. Nothing. I don't want to do it. Now, if you're doing it because you want to connect and you want to build a relationship, yeah. But sometimes I find myself just doing it like, man, what am I doing right now? What am I investing my time in? So I really love that because that's a true law of this universe. Uh, next one, make a change in the world. Make a change in the world. I was listening to a sermon by Pastor Tori Roberts from One Church LA here in LA. They have a great online service and in person. Check it out. Uh, but I love, yesterday he talked about becoming famous through your purpose rather than just chasing fame because you're already famous for who you are when you do what you were put here to do when you fulfill your purpose. And I feel like that goes in alignment with making a change in the world because there's something that only you can do that you were put here purposely to make become reality. Like there's something that pulls at your heart because it kind of goes in fact with the, you got to care about it a lot. I wouldn't understand when I was getting into fitness and health and I would be combing these fitness magazines and I'd be going to the gym and I'd be looking up new kind of like ways to eat or work out. And people would look at me crazy. I was one time on the balcony of my apartment. We grew up in a packed apartment because I had some little brothers come. And there was this old beat up stationary bike on the balcony. Like beat up and this balcony was like two feet wide. A balcony pretty much made for you not to walk on it. I don't know if you've ever seen a balcony like that. I got on this stationary bike. It was like eight o'clock at night. I put on a sweater, I put on sweats. I was out there on the stationary bike, and I remember someone in my family came outside, and they were like, yo, what are you doing? I was like, man, I'm getting this workout in. I was just getting into working. I didn't quite know it, but I had an idea that sweating was going to take me where I wanted to go. I just had that kind of connection. I kind of made that connection. And she was like, you already lost weight. Why are you continuing? And for me, I said, I still got goals. Just because I lost some weight doesn't mean I'm where I want to go. It doesn't mean I stopped. 
And that's when I started to realize the things that pull at my heart may not make sense to everybody else. It may not make sense why it's 8 o'clock at night and everybody else is watching TV and I got the sweats on on this little skinny balcony on this beat-up old stationary bike. To me, that made perfect sense because I had goals that I wanted to get to and that was the only tool I had at the time to get there. And to everybody else who didn't care about what I cared about, not good or bad, who just cared about different things, to them it was like, this is crazy. But that's why it's your purpose. It's not their purpose. And that's why you care about it. They don't care about it. But for me, I understand now more that that's just a part of the journey, not that, well, if they don't care about it, is it the right thing? They're not supposed to care about it. It's your purpose. And really, it's what's going to make you the most happy. It's what's going to make you the most successful. It's what's going to make your journey the most fulfilling. If you're having a problem, I've had times in my life where I, am I fulfilled? Am I happy? It was when I wasn't connected to my purpose that I was put here for. Because you remember, once you connect to your purpose, the money comes, the fame comes, the notoriety comes, the success comes, the abundance comes through your purpose, not through fame and notoriety and success. It doesn't come through those avenues. It comes through the avenue called success. They are or our purpose. It's a byproduct, not a goal. Remember, Jim Rohn says, success isn't something you pursue, it's something you become because of who you attract. Very dope. And then the last thing I'm going to leave you with, build a really good team. He says, anytime that any massive success is created, it's never one person. He said, I know we get faked out a lot of times thinking it's one person, the president. You've got these movie stars, and you've got these singers, and you've got all this stuff. It is always a team. On the movie set, there's hundreds of people. Somebody wrote the script. Somebody's doing the music. Somebody did the makeup. Somebody's doing the directing. Somebody's doing the camera. It's not just your boy Denzel Washington right there. And once you understand that, first you got to understand to build a team, you must be a part of a team. You must become a team player. And then also you always got to keep your eyes out on what kind of team do I want to be a part of and what kind of team am I building in your life? And really, that's a key thing to understand because we're all a part of a team right now. You're a part of your family, your coworkers, your friends. That's your team right now. But what kind of a team are you intentionally building to create your future, your, your purpose, your success? Are you aligning with people that are going in the same direction? Are you intentionally putting yourself around people that are going to push you, stretch you, give you feedback like you talked about, raise the bar? Or are you going to be around people that – just happen to be around, that they're convenient, that they let you slide, that they don't raise the bar, that they have low standards so they make you feel successful because you have, they have low standards so you're like, well, I'm doing better compared to them. Is that the kind of team you're going to be around? Because your team is everything. And to start that, what kind of a team player are you for your team? Are you the person that raises the bar? Are you the person that empowers? Are you the person that brings positivity? Are you the person that raises the expectation. Are you the person that says, hey, man, we said we were going to do this. Let's push. Man, we said we were about this mission. Let's get back on track. What kind of team player are you first before you can become a team leader? I love that. All right. So let's get a few shares, takeaways. Give me a thumbs up or a smile. I got one from Selena Ibarra. Love how he stated to learn from everyone. In Herbalife, we always do that, but it's different to learn from your team. We do that here a lot in Dallas with a quick start learning from all coaches. And even if we have done something before, we train our mind to learn differently. It matters more to decide as a group than as an individual. Thank you, Selena. Appreciate that. All right, next, who's got a smile? Give me a thumbs up. Justin from, from London. Man, all the way. With it. Um, so I'm sorry to disappoint. I don't have an accent, y'all. <laughs> I'm Mexican states. <laughs> but, um, so I did want to share with you guys one of the things um, Mark Zuckerberg said was talking about on Facebook having to choose between making it a um, this business um, uh, experience or a client or a, a product experience. I thought that was really powerful, like really working on, you know, whatever business you have, really working to uh, focus on the client and give them a great experience. You know what I mean? Um, I think that's that's powerful for me uh, because, you know, whatever business you have, you got so many different uh, dynamics that you're trying to balance. And really focusing on the um, your client and the product is powerful. 
And then the second one was about social bonds. Um, for me, that was probably just getting out to the UK. Um, I was able to meet um, someone who was in the fitness scene here, um, introduced her, ourselves to it in the grocery store. And we didn't even know, but she posted our, our business card on her social media. And that alone connected us to clients. Like just didn't didn't talk to her, just gave good energy, and that social bond created opportunity. And now you know it's it's a it's a little bit of a great opportunity going on. So social bond is really huge for me. Dope, love that. All the way from uh, from London, he's gonna be working on his accent. Don't worry, you guys. Uh, but I love that social bonds are so important. I love the way he talked about the the ability to build because it's a muscle should be taught in schools. And the fact that it's left out really leaves a lot of people like ill-equipped in that place. Like, how do you create friends? Like I've got, you know, some family members that are younger that because of texting, they don't know how to act on text. And I'm like, yo, I'm just not even gonna respond. I need to have a conversation face to face and say, hey, this is the way we talk to people. This is the way we interact. This is the way we build relationships because it's not taught in school. What's taught in school? Two plus two equals four, you know? A, B, C, D, which is great. You got to have that. But you also got to have how to interact with people, how to build relationships, how to communicate effectively. Because if you look around, who you know and who knows you matters a lot more inside of your career, inside of your life, than just, yo, does, do they know 2 plus 2 equals 4? Yo, let me give you a little hint. Everybody knows 2 plus 2 equals 4. If you didn't know, you can ask Google. So what's going to be more important, what you know or who you know? Of course, what you know is always going to be important, but if somebody doesn't know you, you can't create the bond and the, and the outcome from that relationship if they don't even know you. And that comes from social interaction, bonds, creating that. So great one. Let's get another takeaway. Give me a thumbs up, smile. Diana Pena. What's up? Where are you hey, from? Guys. I'm from California. Oh, California. California. Let's get it. Oh, <laughs> Colombia. Let's get it. All right. What's your takeaway? Okay, uh, these two are very connected. Uh, they're getting feedback from your team and uh, see what they think, what they are thinking. Uh, sometimes we get too in the leading mode and we want to plan everything and do everything for everybody. And we forget that there is many visions around and we need to connect to those people as well. And the other one is learn from the people around you. Um, I love when he said that a decision made in a group environment is much better than uh, just my own decision and to see what is the dynamic I want for my team. Um, so just being the conscious mind of doing that. Nice. Using the team thing, the group thing, and understanding that there's different perspectives. Loves that. We got time for one more takeaway. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a smile. Give me a, give me a look at me. Who's thinking? People are still waking up, I see. Eva, what's your takeaway? I was like, I really hope he doesn't see me because because you guys can see I'm still doing my hair for today. But good morning, good morning. Um, my biggest takeaway uh, was definitely the teamwork aspect as well. So to give a little quick shout out to Roxy, she thinks she's you know not that savvy on Facebook, but if it wasn't for Facebook, girl, we wouldn't be on the same team. So give yourself some credit. You definitely know enough to socially bond, uh, which is my other uh, feed, uh, you know big takeaway that I took is that. Um, I'm realizing that my purpose on being able to build my own business um, is to show that it can literally be made by anyone. You know, um, Roxy and Aubrey, you guys talk about this a lot where people think that you basically woke up one day and were just successful, right? They, they're seeing it now. They're like, oh, wow, well, it's easy for you because you're so fit. You're so um, over well known. But I feel like because I have come into the game at the time that I have, and I have the ability to use things like social media. I can take advantage of that and be transparent with my journey to show other people that they can do it as well. Um, so being part of a team is big on that because there's only so much I can do on my own without the feedback being given that if I'm doing something to improve myself and everyone around me. So um, very similar to what we've all been talking about right now, which is just teamwork and social bond is critical, especially if you're into something like your own business, uh, because it may be your business, but it's not successful if you're by yourself. But that's my takeaway. Nice. Love it. Great takeaway. Love it. Thank you guys so much. Amazing, amazing triple M. I want to thank everybody that's on live. 
Everybody has shared their takeaways. Everybody has watching the recording. You guys, don't leave the information with you. Pay it forward. Like, we got it from Mark Zuckerberg, like he shared. If he wouldn't have shared, we couldn't have done this. Share, pay it forward. Repost the flyer. Repost a picture or image that represents what your takeaway was. And then also post the link, recording link, which I'm going to post on Facebook, you guys. So pay it forward. Invite to next week's Triple M. Every single week, we start with positive input to have a positive week, you guys. I'm going to take everybody off mute. Where's that energy at? Happy Monday. Hey guys, have a great Monday. Let's go. Peace.